Thank you for clicking on the video. Welcome back to the channel. This is our last. Re well, it ain't the last because we're gonna be. We'll, 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 we're gonna circle back. <laughs> we're gonna circle back. That's what Brittany be saying, and it cracks me up every time. We're gonna circle back. We're gonna circle back. Um, and y'all probably like, who's Brittany? <laughs> if you know me, then you know who I'm talking about. Anyway, um, we're here for the Real Housewives of Potomac. Season 8, episode 18, an iconic ending. And I'm not even going to go through these notes because I honestly, can we just skip to the good stuff? Can we just get to the good part? Okay, so of course, after the camera's wrapped, um, Deborah is mouthing off. I'm going to call, what uh, James Caldwell was calling her. Oh, no, no, no. That's Jacqueline. <laughs> He be calling her Jacqueline. Somebody be calling her Zabora. And I can't think of who it is. Like what YouTuber? I watch. I have so many faves. I don't have so many faves. But I watch a, a few. I feel like it, it might have been really BTV calling calling her Debora. <laughs> Zabora. Anyway, Debra. She mouthing off. Um, and then she's yanked up by Kiana. Um, the cameras imme immediately. Immediately. Roll them. Immediately roll them. Immediately. Um, they pick them back up. The cameras pick back up. And um, Kiana's in the bathroom with um, a towel to her forehead. She's bleeding. Um, Candace is out the door yelling and screaming, get that raggedy bitch. You raggedy bitch. Don't you throw that up here. You raggedy bitch. <laughs> Get her up out of here. Deborah outside telling a different story. And, and according to her, Candace and Wendy were talking shit about her. Girl, we're not in high school. People can talk shit about you. And you just going on about your business. You don't have to run up on people. Like, we're not like the days of, I heard you was talking about me. Those days are over. Like, post high school, we don't do that no more. That ain't how, that ain't how we walk up on, on, on another woman, woman to woman. <laughs> you, like you you gotta grow up you really gotta grow up um and it was obvious she came for a fight she in there in her in her in her in her athleisure she is she in there her athleisure wear <laughs> in her in her sneaks and with her sneaks and her high bun and her vaseline in hand she came she came to scrap she came she came to do that um Wendy, she feels like Deborah um, got the push from Ashley to kind of stir some shit up with Candace. And she, Deborah's been, just been trying to have a moment with Candace on camera. And Candace is inviting the bait. Candace is telling that girl, I wish you just go. Like, no, leave, get her away from me. Leave me alone. I'm absolutely not engaging with you. No. Um... Kiana was fine until Deborah hit her with that glass in the forehead. Now see, De uh, Kiana caught a stray. Which you trying to you trying to throw drinks and trying to throw glasses and things, and you done hit me. And so now I got to bop your ass upside the forehead. Now they rolling, and now it's a tussle. <sighs> Ashley defends her friend. When it comes to Ashley, this is all Candace's fault because Candace yet again was mouthing off, and I guess somehow she deserved it. Anyway, um, two days later, Karen, she just, <laughs> they're all getting up to, to, um, view the, the pictures. I think this was when they was going to view the pictures, wherever they at. Um, they're all coming together and, sh and Karen shows up with security. <laughs> she got security with her. Um... Deborah been on social media, like doubling down on it. Um, she's proud of herself. You know, I guess she's on some end and I'll do it again. And so Ashley says she's had to distance herself, distance, you know, kind of take a, take a pause, the relationship with, um, Deborah because of that, because like, we're not going to just drag, you know, um, Ashley, Ashley's full of shit. I'm just going, we're just going. That, that's where we, that's where I'm going to start and stop right there with Ashley. She's full of shit. Um, 
Karen checks in on Giselle. Her father, at the time, was in the ICU one day at a time. We know now that her father did pass um, shortly after surgery. And so um, we send our sincere condolences to Giselle and her family. Um, I know that it's a trying time and I know that it was difficult. Um, and even, and even, you know, with it being Giselle, I still feel very sad for her. Like I really do. I'm kind of, I'm kind of welling up a little bit in the eyes. Y'all don't see it, but I can feel it. I can feel myself getting emotional for her because it's apparent. It's apparent. Um, is her mom still with us? I don't remember her. I feel like, have we even seen her mama? We've seen more of her father than her mom. Either way, either way, I'm so, we're, 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 I am very sorry to hear about the passing of Giselle's father. I know that he meant a lot to her. Um, when it comes to uh, Karen and um, Giselle, their relationship is, they have that genuine, you know, kind of frenemy situation going on. And it ain't even really frenemies. It's just, I see you, we see each other. You know, we do good um, television together. Um, I think that Karen truly does care about Giselle and vice versa. Like, I think that it's, it's there's a genuine connection there. Um, but they also genuinely call out each other's, you know, faults and, and shortcomings and, and they can both, they both, um, know when the other is bullshit. <laughs> and, and so it's perfect. They really do. I, I like, I like their dynamic. Um, Kyle is there. He trying to blame, he trying to blame Candace too. Just. Why are you even talking, Kyle? Why we even need to hear your point of view? Anyway, um, let me hurry up because I really got somewhere to be and I'm just, I don't want to ramble too much. I don't want to ramble too much. I need to get to the end of this. Me and her family arrive. Her mom is also there. Robin gets there. Um, she wasn't around for the fight, but she heard about it. Giselle wasn't around for the fight either, but she heard about it. You already know, even though these people ain't see nothing, they still going to think, Oh, well, Candace was talking shit, so that's what happened. She's the cause of it. Candace said that, too. <laughs> Candace said, I, somehow this will all be my fault. Just just, just wait on it. Somehow they're going to make this my fault. Wendy and Eddie get there. Um, Wendy goes straight to Karen, of course. Candace and her mom. Wendy feels away. She is angry. They're all just, you know, it's the aftermath of that fight. And so everybody is kind of, you know... Either walking on eggshells. It's just it's just a weird energy in the room. Um, but they're all, you know, in their respective little cliques talking about it. Sharice. Sharice show up in a boot. Because Sharice says she got, she caught a stray. <laughs> Sharice was trying to hold back Candace and Candace stepped on her foot. So she re-injured her foot. It was already injured before and now she just re-injured it. She in a boot today. Um, the ladies finally you know, are t all together in a group talking about the fight. Ashley and Sharice, they feel like, um, they both feel like Candace picking up that bottle was too much. Ashley felt like, oh, it's not a good look. Sharice was telling her, girl, you was going to go to jail if you used it. Like, what was you about to do with that bottle? Bust her upside the head. What you thought I was going to do? So she can throw, she can assault me with liquors. And, and glass and glass champagne flutes. But I can't pick up this champagne bottle and get, be ready and equipped for whatever it is I got to do to defend myself. See, I don't like that. I don't like that. It's fine for people to do whatever they want to do to Candace. But when she reacts to the madness, she's the one that's wrong. She's just taking it too far. Oh, you took it too far. Candace is always going low. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Y'all know what it is when you when you get into a, a spar with words with Candace. Either be ready or don't be ready. But you can't not be ready and say, oh, well, I, I would, let's just fight. 
That's not how it works. And we also can't say, if you talking shit, you need to be ready to, you know, throw hands. You need to be able to do both. No, we're all adults and we should all be able to control our emotions. We should all, we are all responsible for our emotions and how we react to people. And whether I react and give you all the words that'll cut and cut deep or not, you better get to getting in the dictionary and figure some shit out. Because the answer is not to just start throwing hands. It's just not. You cannot physically attack people because they said something to you. Like, we you, we have been learning that for years. Use your words. Use your words. If you if you somebody that can't use your words, then you just might need to get up and go. <laughs> because Candace is somebody that's going to use her words. It, it just so happens Candace is always met with somebody that... <laughs> doesn't have the wherewithal and 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 their first thing is i'm about to just start swinging on your ass because i don't like what you said anyway um ashley like she she's justifying deborah's actions she she constantly this is all candace's fault candace goes low and they they just can't take it um and neka she doesn't hold ashley responsible like solely because you know we're all adults um, and, and Ashley says she's not taking accountability for anybody's actions. We are adults. Because Wendy was like, I feel like, I feel like she was, your friend was, was she had an agenda. And she did. She came in there ready to jump on Candace. <clears throat> um, but Candace did ask multiple times, please get this lady away from me. Please go away from me with this. Um... Karen, she chastises Ashley. Don't be bringing these folk around the group that's going to be coming in, shaking the table and making us look bad and and, and, and dumbing us, bringing us down. Now, we're not going to do that. We can't be bringing folks around that's doing that's doing all that. And Ashley apologized. You know, like, listen, I apologize for bringing this bird into the fold and, and around this group. I would do my best not to bring birds around anymore. <laughs> um... Oh, I meant to tell you at the at the thing, Candy's sister roll up on Ashley too. Like, I hope I don't have to see that girl no more. Cause listen, I'm not finna just sit around and see my sister get attacked. <laughs> but sis ain't even on the show no more, girl. So you ain't even got to worry about that. Your sister done she done bowed out gracefully. She done bowed out gracefully. She's out of there. And I'm proud of Ashley. Happy for I mean not Ashley. Happy for Candace. Proud of her for choosing herself, choosing her her peace. Choosing her um, well-being, you know, if you will. And she's departing from this show. She can always come back. She can go do some other ventures. Candace really wants to embark in the entertainment world, like singing, acting. And so do that. Go do that. Go audition for all the roles. Go and record your other album. Do the thing, Ash. I mean, Candace. Do the thing. Um... And did y'all hear Robin ain't coming back either? I was tickled pink, okay? When I say elated, oh, I hope it's true. I hope it's true. Dear God, I hope it's true. <laughs> um, Mia, you know, she she takes a moment to give people a speech, you know, because, of course, this is the unveiling of all the pictures. Oh, speaking of the pictures, um, let's run down. Okay, we know Candace was Diana Ross. It didn't really give Diana Ross. Gave Candace in a in a head wrap. I mean, still nice pictures, but I I didn't get Diana at all. Um, G Giselle was Beyonce from the Super Bowl. Um, uh, Robin, absolutely not, girl. Me and Karen was like, now nah, Robin, you like your picture? Cause girl, you don't even look like Mariah. <laughs> Do you like it? Because I don't like it. I'm not really feeling your picture. <laughs> she kept telling that girl, I'm not really feeling it. It's just not looking like Mariah to me. And, he, and Robin, she also can admit that it's definitely her in a wig and not, it doesn't really, doesn't really resemble or make you feel like, or make you think of Mariah at all. Like at all. At all. Um... I don't know, maybe they should have gave her another another like iconic Mariah look, but it just wasn't giving Mariah at all. Um Wendy did she did Cheryl Lee Ralph justice. She did, she did good. She did good. I was it was it was I liked it. 
Um, I'm missing somebody. Mia. Mia ain't getting Mia ain't looking like no damn Pam Greer. It definitely look like Mia up there just taking a taking a picture. Anyway, she gives a speech. Gordon gives gets up there and thanks her for being an amazing wife, an amazing mother. She's great. She's this. She's all the things. She's Miss United States. Then we 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 break and come back. <laughs> and we're back three months later. Um, Eddie and, and Wendy, they, they're telling us in their confessionals that Gordon reached out to the men in a group text saying, Hey, put your wives on notice. Me and me are getting a divorce. And so apparently these folk been separated all this time. Mia has been lying to us the entire time. I can't even, I, I can't even, I can't even feed it to you slowly. I just got to blurt it out. She been lying. She been lying this whole time. She been lying. This is why Mia in that first chair because Mia did the thing. This is why Mia can sit there right next to Andy. Hey, Andy, how you doing? Good to see you too, Andy. <laughs> so apparently, y'all, <laughs> Mia and that man, Ink, they go way back to high school. They go way back to high school. Um, and they've been romantically, she's been sleeping with him all these years. For 10 years, she been she been cheating on Gordon. Now, Gordon had prostate cancer, and after that, he couldn't really get it up like that, you know, so he he turned 70 and everything. He just, you know, told her, listen, I can't pleasure you like that, and I know you're a young woman that need to get bust down, and so do what you do, but be discreet and don't get the kids involved, and what did you do? All of that. You got these kids running and telling me you're in bed with the man and she replacing you, replacing me with him. And you got the kids involved. The kids know him. Why? They shouldn't know who he is. They shouldn't know his name. They shouldn't know none of that. But they know that you cheating on me with this man. Not only that, the paternity of her son is questionable. Ink think it's his baby and still does. We haven't gotten a paternity test because Gordon said whether or not it's his or not. Because she did tell him, listen, I'm pregnant. And I don't know. It could be yours. could be this other man. Because they were open. Um, and it's probably this other man's baby and not Gordon's. But she hasn't, she, she hasn't done a paternity test to figure it out. Andy better have one on hand. <laughs> Andy, you, be, you better have had one on hand. Because I need to know. I need to know. Um... Not only that, so she don't know the paternity of the of the baby. Um, Gordon is mad. Gordon is mad. You know he's tired of the of the front. He's he's really tired of the front. Told her because she's like, this is not fair. <laughs> what she say? This is yeah. This is not fair. She said you want fair? Go to a carnival. Stop sleeping with him then. <laughs> That's the face he made. Cause she's like, why are you doing this? And what is? Why are you? Why are you? It's not. Stop sleeping with him then. You could just stop sleeping around on me. <sighs> she she tries to throw out there that she she ain't no gold digger. Um because how how can she be a gold digger when she loaning him money? When she been, you know, she's been the one taking care of him, get sending him money so he could eat. He said, I moved back in here. So you could do your thing. You need to help with the kids. Basically, he moved back in there so that they could be on this show. Um, and now the jig is up. Go ahead, Mia. Get your check, okay? Get your check. She she listen, she played the long game on our ass. She played the long game. Mia, Mia knew she was gonna drop this <laughs> out of nowhere. She knew it. She knew it. Her lying ass. And Gordon is even fine with with moving forward, like looking past all of this and saying, "Let's move forward. Let's stick. Let's stay married for the kids. You know, let's let's keep that facade going for the kids." And um, he keep bringing up that side nigga though, and she like, "Can you please stop bringing? Why do you keep bringing him up?" He's saying, "Why do you keep sleeping with him?" <laughs> Who he scorned? He is scorned. He say, if you want to go, bye. Because she's still trying to save face, too. Like, how do we, how do we, 
how do I have how do I continue to stay married to you and 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 still spend your coin and have good sex with this man over here? How do I do that? <laughs> until next time. Until next time, people. We'll be back for the reunion. How many parts we get in this reunion? I mean, I feel like it ain't one wasn't, wasn't, wasn't much going on. I mean, it can really be a one parter. Can really be one one good solid one good solid reunion. Anyway, be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It's Call Me Busby, and I'll chat with you later. Peace and light.